Hey, what's up guys? Fish Tank Mike here. Today we're going to be finishing up the deck pond that we made in the last episode. If you guys are new, I have a whole playlist. It's called Pond Season 3 where we're going to have all of the pond related videos for this season. Pond Season 2 was another playlist. It's last year's. It includes the greenhouse, which you will see a little bit later in this. So check those out if you're interested. Also, a couple other things. While we are going to be upgrading this pond, we're not going to go into the full details of it. I did write a really comprehensive blog post about it and I'll have that linked in the description. So check that out if you want to learn more about it. Finally, before we go ahead and get started today, you might notice that we have a new t-shirt. So this is the new Cowboy Bozmani Fish logo, I guess. It was kind of themed after my favorite emoji that I'm always spamming on Instagram, the, the cowboy emoji, obviously. So if you want to support the channel, there will be a link to this t-shirt, this exact one, and thank you in advance if you decide to support the channel. So here we are at the pond. Let's get a quick temperature check here. I believe it is like 11 a.m. in the morning, and we're starting to get some full sun on here so 72 degrees perfect temperature for this time of year and I'll be honest with you today's the first day that I've gotten a thermometer out here so I haven't been able to check the temperature swing on this throughout the day today we're gonna do that so hopefully in the next episode I'll be able to go over that with you not sure how well you can see past these reflections but we have our solar pump I ended up having to attach it to this pot because there was no way it was gonna suction to the side of this steel tub the only thing that's left to do is add some aquarium plants to the substrate down here so let's go down to the greenhouse house and get some stuff all right so we got the doors wide open today because it is gonna be pretty hot and by pretty hot I mean like maybe 80 but in here it'll probably get close to a hundred so we need to make sure we have good ventilation the pond is already becoming co totally covered with all the water hyacinth and some of the water lettuce. This guy I had to take out, um, and then I was lazy on putting him back in, so got a little wilty. We need to save this guy. That'll be part of what we're gonna do today. We have some other pond plants still here, uh, but we wanna grab some of the dwarf sag that's down in the bottom of this pond. You probably can't see it, but I'm gonna go ahead and grab some. All right, so what I did was I already went through here and I broke off all of the connected pieces to form individual plants. If you're new to aquarium plants or maybe just new to dwarf sag, it's gonna grow uh, runners, it's gonna shoot off additional new plants from one main plant. So here's an example of that. You can see these two are connected. And that's essentially what each of these new plants are gonna do once we get them planted and once they get growing good. They're gonna quickly cover the bottom of this, hopefully, and give us a really nice carpet down there. It's gonna provide a lot of really nice hiding spots for our fish that will Will eventually go in here and I just really love dwarf sedge. I think it's one of the coolest plants especially for outdoor growth. It's pretty easy for me to grow in my neck of the woods and chances are you'd have a good time with it too so highly recommend this stuff. I'll have a link for it in the description. We'll check back on these plants once the water in here clears up a little bit, guys. We were kicking up some sand, uh, but let's go back down to the greenhouse and let's see what else we can find. Maybe closer to some stem plants. I think it'd be really cool to have something spilling over the side of this thing. Ludwigia, 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 Ludwigia palustris is a really great easy to grow stem plant, especially outside in my climate. And I know that there's some hiding in here somewhere. So. Uh, we planted it over here on the left side of the pond last year, and it was growing all out over even on the ground, which was pretty sweet, but I'm not really seeing any of it. Like, maybe this is some right here, or this could just be some of the creeping jenny. It's hard to tell because the immersed growth is always a little bit different. I remember it being a little bit more red, though, so I don't know. We could definitely use that because if it is the creeping jenny, that's, I mean, a great aquatic pond plant so let's think about what we want to do here say hi to Chris everybody where'd he go he was camera shy he had to dart off but anyway let's uh huh what are we gonna do here I'm trying to not get stung by this yellow jacket over here oh there's Chris hey Chris well until we can find some good palustris I'm gonna take some more of the Sylvania upstairs great floating plant especially for our little pond it's gonna work out better than any of the really big water hyacinths just because they take up so much room. Maybe what we need to do is actually go inside and pick out something like a Rotala because I've always wanted to get really good red growth out of a plant like Rotala Red 
in something like an outdoor pond. Let's grab some of the red stuff that we have over here and we'll see if we can keep it red in the new pond rather than trying to turn it red. Is that cheating? I don't know, but I think we should still go for it. And then if I come over here to the forest tank, we have some really nice immersed grown Rotala green. I think, or just rotundifolia, not sure. So we'll grab some of that. I have a plan with that stuff. And then let's grab some of this S repens because it's leggy and tired anyway. And we'll see how that does in the substrate with the dwarf sag. So we have a few little experiments here, guys. You can see here's all of the immersed grown Rotala that I just kind of put into the pot there. And it doesn't look good now, but hopefully, you know, give it a few weeks and it starts to creep over here onto the edge of the pond and fills in. We got our red highlight Rotala experiment in the back here. Just a few stems, we'll see how that goes. Probably can't see it, too much reflection, but the S Repens is down here in this corner. And then lastly, I went back and I grabbed another kind of ratty piece of the Rotala rotundifolia and just stuffed it in there. We'll see what happens with this, but kind of a similar thing to what we're doing over here. It's just planted in the substrate on this one. So we'll see what happens. Someone in the comments of the last video suggested that I cut the rims of these pots lower so that they sit underneath the water level. And that's something that I'm totally gonna do. Thank you very much for that comment. I love hearing your guys' ideas. They oftentimes help me out a lot. So yeah guys, just a quick video today. I wanted to get that little pond update to you, let you know that everything's going good with it and we're getting closer and closer to adding fish to it. I'm gonna go ahead and wrap this up though. It's getting hot out here, I'm getting sweaty. Go check out the new t-shirt if you're interested in supporting the channel and also check out the blog post on the mini ponds if you haven't already and you wanna learn more about these things. They're super, super fun. Thanks again for watching guys and we'll see you in the next one.